Hi, I'm GamerNickels08, and as a gamer, I need my way to play video games. Now sure, I do a lot of keyboard gaming, with my keyboard and mouse on the PC and stuff, but I also have a lot of video game consoles, which means I know a lot about controllers. So you have three separate types of controllers. You got the main official ones that are just your generic stock, like the DualShock 3 for this instance. You have the third party replicas-ish, where it's supposed to be cheaper, it can be licensed by the console manufacturer, and it's made for a cheaper device, like my Pro Controllers for the Switch, this is my Mario 3 themed one, it doesn't have the HD rumble, and you have to put double A's in it, but it works, and also I have these back buttons, which I'd like to see you say that about your Pro Controller that isn't modded. And then finally, you get this thing. This is the Switch Pad by Emo spelt with an I, because someone didn't want to take their company seriously, but they realized, oh crap, we can't call ourselves emo, let's just add another letter. Now I have this emo pad, uh, the switch pad, and you might be going, well that just looks like a normal third party controller for the Nintendo Switch, like the, uh, like the Power A one was that you showed us that was battery powered, but it's got a gimmick. the face buttons come out. So basically you take these things out and you can get other Nintendo buttons. You just plop it into the controller the right way of course. There are two hinges to keep you from not putting it in the right way. You take your new face plate or any face plate because any face plate works they're the same. But if you just want to be really classy about it then you just slide that back on and just you just press it on buddy just just no brute force er, wait ah. no magnets none of that stuff to hold it in properly it's just latches and brute force you're gonna break this maybe I don't know I haven't used it enough eventually it will wear down over time who knows how long I don't know it might last for a while from chronological order of when you get these face buttons, you have NES, and it's coinciding faceplate. You have Super Nintendo, and it's gray faceplate. You have N64, as I've already shown, with its red faceplate. And you get GameCube, and it's purple faceplate. Then if you just want to relax with the default, you get this generic switch looking like button placement in the black pad. Pretty cool, right? Now I instantly have some issues with these buttons. First things first, this. The NES buttons. Yeah, they're NES buttons. What do you expect? But here's the thing, there's only two of them, just like the NES. And this is a switch controller. You need four. So, yeah, I'd... how that works beats me. Next one I have an issue with is the N64 controllers, because unlike the NES ones, these have the opposite issues. If you can count, there are six buttons. Base switch has four. What are you doing with the extra two buttons? Well, I'll tell you what. Because I thought that if you ran this through an ele emulator on your PC or just through X input or something, you'd get all six buttons and you could do whatever, like an emulator or something with that. No. You want to know what they actually do? You put it in, and these two top buttons replicate the triggers on the controller. So now I have a top and right C button that do nothing because I'll just use the triggers. Didn't need them anyway. And that makes using this for emulation so you can have your four C buttons and you don't have to use a stick. N no, man, don't. A slight issue that I have with this, which is really a non-issue, more nitpick, is that these are the same button comments. It's just this one's shinier and stuff. 
Also, I'm pretty sure they sell these controller with versions where the buttons are purple for my friends who live in the US and don't know what a Super Famicom even is. Finally, we have the GameCube one for if you want to play Smash Brothers, but you're not getting that stupid adapter, even though you own an actual GameCube and you'd have all the controllers there just ready to use. I don't play Smash Brothers. I don't care. Either way, this is actually pretty solid. I like this one. I like this one. It's not one I'm going to use a lot. I'm mostly going to be using this one or the Super Nintendo one, but I like this one. This is nice. This is just... It's nice, man. It's just... Y you have it. You know? You know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. So that's enough about me blabbering about the buttons of the controller. How does the controller itself feel? Eh... Uh, I mean, I'm fine, I guess. So this is what you see right out of the box when you first get this controller, though it's on because it's connected to my PC. Nice, sleek. One of them is that stupid Wii U reflecting plastic that gets fingerprints on a lot. But then you also got that nice feeling that all the faceplates are because they're not this. And then you also have those nice rubber grips that feel pretty nice actually these grips feel nice then we get to the crap for instance these triggers first issue they're analog triggers or more specifically they're digital triggers made to look like analog triggers why did they do it i don't know the switch doesn't support analog con trigger controls and this is has no option to have it load into X input where analog triggers would be supported. So the reason why they're designed like analog triggers but they're just normal digital triggers is something I do not understand. So overall, oh wait, there is one more thing I want to talk about. And I already kind of mentioned this before, but these face plates. There are many face plates you can mix and match if you want, or you can just stick to the base. But these things, well, they've got a, well, they've got a major downside. They pop off. Whoops. They pop off. So when you're putting this on constantly, off and on and off and on again, you have to use a lot of force. Eventually, the pins that hold this thing in place will break. And then, unless if you use, like, tape or something, the controller's toast because your face buttons won't stick in the controller, as demonstrated when I swung it around with the faceplate on. I mean, technically, if you held it really still or just kept your finger on the button and never used this stick right here, you'll be fine, but just, just keep that in mind. Don't switch buttons often to keep the life on. Also, the face plates are really hard to remove and put on, and I think you need to break them in. But you don't want to break them in too much because then you're going to break it. And then you can't use it. Yeah. So let's stop jabbering and get to actual gameplay. So let's start off in chronological order here and go with the original NES buttons first. Great. Just put that in and get ready to play some NES. Originally, I was going to set up my controller to my Switch and get footage off of the NES Virtual Console, but then I realized why bother? Because it's just face buttons and I'm not going to play a legitimate uh, Switch game with two face buttons instead of four. So enjoy me playing Mick Kids on an emulator on my computer to test this stuff. And I'm just going to go over some basic, simple things with the controller. The buttons feel fine. I haven't used many NES controllers because I don't actually own an NES, believe it or not. But the controller feels fine. Those buttons feel fine. They feel like what I remember the NES buttons feeling like. 
and so yeah uh, if you're wondering why I chose my kids for the gameplay section it's because I wanted a game that wasn't on the Nintendo Switch Online virtual console replacement but then I realized oh wait this is good enough and I don't have many thoughts on the face buttons of the NES controller so I'm not gonna play this long and also I am bad at making kids fun so yeah that was the uh, that was the NES controller buttons fun very fun so next up is the SNES configuration and the switch configuration but that I put up that away because I did the first take without realizing that my mic was off this because the, they feel the same they're just different paint jobs so I'm doing them at the same time so yeah let's let's see how these feel I'm gonna play a couple of games maybe one on switch this time so yeah um, the basic configuration slash nest configuration it's pretty good yeah man I, I don't have much to say the buttons feel nice I played it in the SNES configuration because there was no way I was doing that in the normal switch configuration actually I'm talking about it like it was the N64 configuration which I'm doing next uh, no anyway enjoy this footage of me and my sister uh, playing Mario Kart 8 and if the audio isn't too bad because I totally left the TV volume on too high and it got picked up in our mic probably uh, if the audio isn't bad enjoy our little banter while we play through a entire four cup yeah that you know what I mean uh, if it's not there that means the audio was bad Ah, crap. I hope the audio is bad for the blooper we recorded, too. Because that was funny. Oh, well, it's a blooper reel. They won't care if there's audio getting mixed up in both. Yeah. yeah. Bestie, what is this? Oh, that was you. Bestie, are you okay? God dang it. I'm sorry. It's no, okay, this is Mario. I'm not, I, I'm not sorry. I, I'm sorry that I'm not sorry. Cause I'm not sorry. Just remember, Allison. You must weep what you sow. Wait, what do you mean? Bomb. I have bomb. My bomb missed on a bell. Yeah, you reap what you sow, my friend. Die. This is the reason why you always have a super horn on you. Oh yeah, that's right. And with phantom I frantic items on, you still don't get anything when you're in first place. But you can get the star in third. AKA, it's just even more of an unfair disadvantage to the people in front. I hate you. Unless that wasn't you. I don't know. That was me. I Again. threw four of the dang things. I hate you. Bam! Oh well. I won! And the commentary can blame the controller. <laughs> I guess. Hello, future Nicholas here. I just want to mention that I messed up big time because I accidentally left my mic muted when recording some of these parts. So I'm just stopping in to say, hey, it's a wonderful time of day to learn that I am not doing the N64 configuration because 
the controller would not work with my emulator just at all and the next one that we're doing is the gamecube configuration which i sing high praise for so that's footage of auto mandalista i gotta say i like the button i like the button layout there um, now mostly what was giving me trouble in the footage is the stick because I don't know how to drive cars in Auto Modelista. Er, as the game pronounces it, Auto Modelista! Um, so that, that might need a little work on. Maybe just watch a tutorial video or two. But yeah, that was fun. I liked that. That was cool. I left the game running and now the music is blasting in my ears. So I'm gonna make this a little quicker. Overall, the buttons for the GameCube are good. Now it's time to call up a friend and play some Smash. Oh god, I'm gonna regret ever saying that. Future Nicholas here again. Uh, I am glad to say that when I called my friend to ask him to play Smash Brothers, he did not answer. So I was spared a game or two of Smash Brothers. <sighs> By the way, Lucas, this is not an invitation to ask me to play Smash Brothers just because I wanted to do it this time because GameCube button layout. I don't want to play Smash. Uh, but yeah, so let's just go on to my conclusion. And so that was all of the combinations of buttons that was actually worth changing to on this controller. It's plugged into my Switch because it wouldn't Bluetooth connect with my Bluetooth setup. I probably need to just make it forget the device whenever I want to connect it Bluetooth to my uh, Switch. But yeah, um, so you might be wondering, what is my final thoughts on this controller? Well, it's a little rough around the edges it's a budget switch controller no the buttons don't feel the best and the gimmick might be a little worthless at the end of the day when it comes to me well a it's another pro controller I only have like three of them the SN30 Pro and my two uh, and my two of these my Mario 3 one and the Zelda one uh, so now I have four pro controllers, so somebody's going to be using that whenever we're playing, and so I don't have to use my Joy-Cons. And uh, there are just some stuff, man, like the GameCube this, this GameCube button set, I'm going to be using that a lot for emulation. Like, I will probably use that for Dolphin uh, a lot. Or I'll just keep the same buttons and just use it as a switch controller. But either way, this is actually a pretty good controller. It is not for everyone though. I can certainly say, if you don't want to have the nostalgia buttons, and you're like, why would I give up two of my face buttons just to play on the Nintendo Switch Online NES game just for more realism? The D-pad on this thing isn't even that good. I'm not. I'm not gonna use that. I'm either gonna get like one of those actual Nintendo Switch Online NES Joy Cons. Or I'm just gonna not deal with it and just use a regular Pro controller or the SN30 Pro or the Joy Cons. And I don't need to use that N64 style thing. I even don't like the N64 style buttons. So why would I use them? And those are fair points. Very fair. Very, yeah. So, overall, there's really good parts. There's high highs, but there's also low lows. So I think I'll give this controller... Six out of ten. The stuff I like about it is cool. The stuff I don't like is bad. It made me fail the special stages. But, oh yeah, I also forgot to mention, the controller has motion controls. 
it has the motion controls. I'm not sure if I mentioned that while playing Mario Kart 8, but it does have the motion controls. You can shake it, you, it has the gyro stuff, just like all the other pro controllers I own. So yeah, if you, if you need motion controls, yeah, it's Bluetooth for another thing, and it actually charges on like uh, my Power A pro controllers that need double A's. But yeah, I might do a review on the double A, or on the, on the Power A's. Probably gonna do a review on this thing, because I love this thing, man. This thing is awesome. But yeah, as for this, it's pretty decent. Um, unless if you're, if you're not really into the whole, oh, look at all the different buttons I can switch and put on and off and stuff, I wouldn't say go out and actively buy it. Same thing if you just have, if you're willing to cough up enough money to get, like, four pro, actual pro controllers, and you don't want gimmicky crap like this, I'd say just don't get it at all. If you don't like the gimmicky crap, but it's a cheap controller, so if you do, like, run into it, or you just need another pro controller for, like, I don't know, when Mario Party Superstars comes out, or playing Mario Kart 8, or Smash, if you don't have GameCube controllers or the adapter, like me, uh, or just a bunch of other crap that you could play. You just got a Switch, and you want a pro controller, but you don't have the money for a pro controller. Other than the Power A's and the SM30 Pro, I'd say pick this up. It's worth your while. But don't get it just instantly off stuff. You can find it on like eBay and stuff for cheaper than I got this. I went to a pallet shop, found this for like 20 bucks and said, I got birthday money. I'll give it a shot. And I like it. I really do. Um, so yeah, if you like the whole... Like, the configuration buttons, just, like, maybe as, like, a blast for the past or to get into it more, or just, you're a nostalgia nerd, uh, get this, it's pretty good. If you don't mind a little crappy, uh, controller issues, um, and just need something to play games on, I, s yeah. If you want a very high quality controller that is on tier with the actual official Pro Controller, this is not for you. That is my completely ad-libbed and not scripted at all review of the Switch Pad by Emo. This is GamerNickels08 signing out and I hope you have a wonderful day. Okay, now go. Okay, so like. Oh I yeah. Don't know. Uh, we were talking after the main recording, and I wanted to throw this in. We'll put in the blooper reel. <laughs> oh my god, no. Um. Anyways, uh, like, does it like isn't like Romeo and Juliet where they like they fall in love? And it's like, oh my god, I love you, and then it's like, oh my god. Our families are like rivals or something. Like my dad doesn't like you or something. I don't know. Romeo like sneaky, shady. I don't know. Um and uh. <laughs> you were close. And then and then um and then Romeo is like ha ah, ha ha. I'm dead, but I'm not gonna tell you. But I'm not actually dead. And so everyone thinks he's dead, but then he's not dead. And then Juliet is like, haha, I'm dead too. And then she's like, oh, you're not actually dead, are you? And then he's like, um, yeah, I'm actually alive. And I think he dies again. <laughs> and then. Okay, so. There, I'm gonna, there, I'm gonna stop you right there. Or, he, so or, you... or, 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 instead of dying, he goes and like kills her dad and it's like. How dare you, even though it was my fault that you died, and then, I don't know. Okay. It was just funny. <laughs> okay, okay. So, I'm, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna lay this down real nice and easy for you. <laughs> so, basically, 
Uh, Romeo falls in love with Julia after crashing a party, but the Montagues and Capulets, their families, are having a rivalry, their family feud, and it's so bad that they're literally breaking out into fights in the streets with, like, swords and crap. Uh -huh. And so, uh, this dude decides to go, and his name is Friar Lawrence, and he goes, okay, I'll marry you two and might stop the feud. And so, uh, yeah, they marry, but that same day, uh, Romeo kills, uh, Juliet's cousin Tybalt, because Tybalt killed Romeo's best friend, Mercutio, after Mercutio decided that he was going to fight Tybalt because Romeo would not fight Tybalt. Because he challenged him because he saw him at the uh, place. And so basically, Romeo is banished because he's not killed because ri the rivalry, rivalry, because Mercutio was related to the prince in some way. I can't remember exactly how. So, basically, he goes, because we were going to kill Tybalt anyway for killing Mercutio, uh, we're just going to banish Romeo instead. So, he gets really sad that he has to leave. So, uh, basically, the friar comes up with a plan of, Romeo will leave, I will tell the people about Romeo and Juliet's uh, marriage, and I'll try to get you pardoned so you can come back here and live happily ever after with uh, Juliet. Well, her dad ain't having any of that crap. And unknowingly decides, well, Tybalt is dead. We need some happiness in this family. I'm going to marry you off to this dude named Paris, Juliet. How's that? And she goes, wait, no, I go to hell if I do that. <laughs> um, and so basically, she goes to the friar for help uh, with, the, with liter her literally saying, if you can't fix this problem, I'm going to kill myself. And so basically, Friar Lawrence went, you have the intent of killing yourself if I can't fix your problem. Well, then I have an idea. Drink this sleepy buy potion that will make you look dead for 48 hours. I'll let Romeo know, and he'll come and rescue you from the catacombs, and we're just gonna pretend that you're dead uh, on your wedding. Uh, and so, yeah. So basically, the wedding happens a day early, because originally Juliet wasn't like, no, I'm not doing it. But eventually, the friar just said, go along with it. You'll be playing dead anyway by the time the wedding rolls around, and you'll not commit sin. Uh, and so, she goes along with it, and he's so happy that he goes, okay, it's not Thursday now, it's tomorrow! <laughs> this, okay. this was, like, on Tuesday in the story, I believe. And so, she does it that night. She dies uh, because of bubonic plague. The letter that was supposed to get to Romeo about what was going on about Juliet and her fake death never reached him, and his man, or like his butler, that kind of dude, goes, finds him and wherever he's hanging out because he's banished, and tells her, th and tells him the news of, hey, Juliet's dead. And so he's like, oh, I, I didn't know about the whole, uh, Juliet faked your death stuff. Hey, Apothecary, I got money and you're poor. Here you go, you're not poor anymore. Give me poison. And he's like, okay, fine, man. Just don't tell him you got him from here because they'll kill me. And so Romeo gets the poison. Uh, he kills Paris because, yeah. Um, more specifically, Paris was outside of the Capulet tomb giving flowers because he was going to marry Juliet. Um, so Romeo kills uh, Paris there because he thinks that, uh, that, um, yeah. He thinks that, uh, Romeo is going to, um, like, ah, oh, crap, I don't know what the word is. Defile, I guess? Uh, I don't know. So anyway, Romeo kills, um, kills Paris, and then he goes over to Juliet's, um, uh, place in this, like, it's not a... I guess it's a tomb, but it's like, it's like, they're a rich family. Both of them are rich families, so they're in this rich family, like, place where all the Capulets are buried. Mm -hmm. And so Romeo goes, he's being all dramatic with, arms, take your last embrace, eyes, make your last look, and lips, make your last kiss. And then he drinks the poison, he's like, wow, this dude wasn't kidding when he said this stuff was good. And then he goes, with a kiss, I die. Bleh. And then Juliet wakes up. In her grave? Well, she was only playing dead. 
She was playing that play pretend. Wait, so she heard all of it? No. She was asleep. Did she actually die? I'm getting there. So anyway, Friar Lawrence also shows up. He's like, come, I'll turn you into a nun. Because, like, she faked her death, and she was going to escape with Romeo, but now Romeo's dead. So what is her options, man? She's going to get disowned and die that way. And so she goes, nah, fam, let me just say my goodbyes to Romeo. And so he's like, okay, but the watch, the police, are coming, so blah, 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 blah. And so Juliet goes, hey, look, it's Romeo's dagger. Look, buddy, I'm your sheath now. <clears throat> oh. And stabs herself. Okay. And then uh, the, the prince comes along and goes, oh, see what, uh, see what your feud caused? Your children are dead. Yeah. Uh, they decide to build a statue in their monument, and the prince goes, uh, Some will be punished, some will be pardoned. There is no more tale of woe than than of Juliet and her Romeo. Okay. That is a quote. Okay. Maybe not an exact quote, but it was close. Okay, but... And in that, and in that summary of the story, I didn't get to say my favorite quote. Why? A plague on both your houses. Okay. I say it in the first and, as of recording, only episode of And Yet It Moves that is up on Gamepad now. And Yet It Moves? Yeah, that's the game we played on Weaver. Oh, the one that we played? Yeah, the gravity one. Did you use my, um... Yes. Do you not watch our channel or something? No. Oh, checks out. Well, it's, I didn't know if you did or not. Or Lucas made the thumbnails, but I'm going to have to ask him to resend them to me because uh, I lost them. Also, I haven't edited any of them, except the first one, because that's the one that's up on the channel now. Oh, so you did, you, you, okay. Yeah. Anyway, a plague on both of your houses was when Mercutio dies by Tybalt. Okay, but... I don't know these people. I didn't know Romeo and Juliet, and I think I was so wrong because something, but... Well, you mixed up who fakes their death and stuff. But, I mean, I was kind of right. I don't know. Well, like, the dad still wasn't having it. The dad wasn't having it in the real story I and mean, in my story. technically... When he said, when I said he wasn't having it, I was being more dramatic because this was, they didn't get the chance to say, hey, these guys are married. Oh. The friar didn't get that chance. Uh, he just went, hey, Tybalt's dead. That's sad. We need something happy. Like a marriage! Hey, Paris, you know when I said that, uh, you woo my daughter and wait for her to become, like, 14 or something? By the way, Paris is, like, 21. Romeo's like 18. Oh and Juliet's 13. 13! God! Oh my god. <laughs> That's just how they did things back then. My dear god, oh my. 13th century England! Women were property. Okay, but here's the thing. Once she like turns 18, Romeo and like. The other dude would have been wrinkly old man. No. Yeah. <laughs> Everybody died of sickness at like their 30s or something, but they weren't wrinkly old men. Especially well, yeah. noblemen like okay. Paris and uh, okay, Romeo. Because they were like the big the high up thing. boys. They had like the fancy clothing and the fancy everything. Okay, but anyway, well, those are still ugly. Um, well, some of them were ugly. Some of the dresses they, they had were for the girls. They were very vibrant. And kind of gay. Fruity. <laughs> Anyways. I mean, I was watching the movie. Like, I was watching one of the movies, oh, and I went. Nicholas. Romeo looks very gay. Nick Nicholas. What? And they were roommates. <laughs> oh my god, they were roommates. Have you never seen that vine? It sounds familiar, but. No, it. Okay, so what happens in the vine is someone walks past, like a girl on her phone. And she very loudly says, and they were roommates. And then the person recording her is like, oh my god, they were roommates. Yeah. 
I understand what the joke is supposed to be there, but not from the dog. Anyway, oh my god! This is. I am not sure if this is gonna be the final blooper or the first blooper. Because I have, like, what? some other bloopers. From what? I don't know. This might be the only blooper I put in. <laughs> That's probably a good thing. Well, Anyways. maybe because I'm gonna play. I was planning on when I'm doing the uh, GameCube review because there's a GameCube face buttons in there too. I was gonna play Smash, which is gonna be a terrible okay, okay. idea because But I suck at Smash. But how fruity were those outfits though? Just look up Romeo and Juliet. But I don't want to. They look like the jesters. The what now? Like, have you ever looked at a picture of a jester and like those bright, flashy clothes? No. It's like all orange and white and like they're all silk and there's like red and not blue. Not blue. That was a nobleman color. No. Then again, I guess silk was a uh, very precious clothing item that cost a lot. Cinnamon! A premium. Hey! Yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna stop it. Now. Oh my god, but he's so fast. Yeah. 